Well, welcome everybody to the greatest the holly, show of them all. Jolly Christmas. Yep. The place where the truth <laughs> yeah. reigns supreme. Hello there, Mr. Jason. Howdy. Mr. Roland. Farmer Allen. How art thou? Motorcycle riding Jason. How, well, just looking right now. <laughs> he must ride. Motorcycle looking Jason. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's... Uh, that's uh, not happening right now. Yeah. How's everybody doing today? Doing great. I was, doing great. I was fine until I saw you, and I got all sad. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I have that effect on. Well, I'm, I'm in the Christmas oh, spirit. Yeah. Just oh. call me Christmas Owl. Christmas oh, Owl. I'm it's going to be a long day today. <laughs> Christmas spirit. Yeah, I might even break out in song. Yeah. I had such a good service at church today, and then I come in here, and it's straight downhill. <laughs> Well, well, on the Smith and Rollins. Well, that's show. the way it is. You're out of sleigh all day. I ain't kidding. Mm -hmm. That's right. You had good church service. Man, we had a great one. It was a, we had a good church service. I heard you preached. I did. It. It. Um, it there was more um, spontaneous insight, I think, into the Word today than than hmm. uh, at any time in the last twenty years for me, actually. That's and what you just run into a lot of truth and run into the Lord. And God was faithful. And then just to say, I need to say this out loud, uh, Joe Barrett preached as well. And he didn't realize it, but Ron Ross was preaching for him. Uh, <laughs> Ron, I know, is in the hospital. Right. But a word that he had sent to Joe Barrett by email oh, really? was preached, and it was just phenomenal. And... Uh, the capturing of all that God was doing. I, I honestly believe it. I say this. It's been my passion for however many years, Alan, and we've been walking together. Just to see the church revived and people revived. And everybody has their own definition of what that looks like. Correct. And I honestly believe through the Word of God, I got a glimpse of it today. Wow. I may never get to see it on earth. Wow. But I'm certainly going to get to see it in heaven. Hmm. And wow. it can happen on earth. And that was the hope that God gave me today is it can happen on earth. And well, you know, so, that's what we were talking about, you know, this mm -hmm. week is the Lord yeah. kept dealing with us. Yeah. And, it was uh, so incredible. It was good. It was good. Why don't you start us off with kind of what the Lord was giving you? And, well. You know, we're talking about doors and portals. And, doors and portals. And, and, and uh, you know, coming off of COP27 last week. Yeah. They finally finished it up this past week mm -hmm. with that climate change. Uh, Did we get our new Ten Commandments? We got them, but I don't think they've completely oh. posted them yet. Oh, okay. Well, they maybe had. Well, I think they have, but everything that I've seen has has been just the a little uh, abbreviated, yeah, yeah. one-liners. They uh, have no uh, any kind of meat to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure they've done that. You know, by yeah, now, they I'm said sure. they would have it done by the end of the summit. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure they did. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But anyway, coming off of that COP27. Climate change, uh, you know, it's amazing to me, Jeff, how and, and Jason, how that's called climate change. And what, what's happening, now just think about the parallel here. The, the world system or the dark forces of this earth, they're saying they're, wanting, they're taking, why climate change? Why not take uh, green frogs or something? I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But they chose climate change. Now, climate change has everything to do with the environment of the earth. Yeah, right. You see, mm -hmm, that's so right. It's, it's the environment of the earth, mm -hmm. and it is taking on. It's uh, symbolic. <clears throat> what they're saying is we're taking over the atmosphere of the earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we know that you have a spiritual atmosphere and a physical atmosphere. So mm -hmm. it's it, symbolically, it's like the climate change uh, 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 idiots. If yeah. You will. yeah, yeah, buffoons. Well, buffoons. Yeah, I was yeah. going to try to clean it buffoons. up. Buffoons. Buffoons. Yeah. Uh, have taken this climate change as a symbolic act of uh, saying that it's going to to that you know about the climate deal but what they're trying to do is capture the environment of the earth yeah. which we know that the spiritual environment of the earth is to be the you know the kingdom of god and over the united states especially but they've taken on the whole globe now mm -hmm. they're going to take over the environment which is yeah. the spiritual environment also because they called all of these global religious leaders in and having them all get 10 new commandments yeah. uh, to, and, and everybody's supposed to repent mm. and uh, repent of, of uh, 
uh, you know, treating the earth like this, mm-hmm. and I don't know what's supposed to happen. Uh, uh, bow at Mother Earth or something. I don't know what. And it is. worship the creation more and, than, the than the creator. Than the creator. Yeah. And so anyway, so we're coming off of the COP twenty seven, uh, and then it looks like that the church of the true believers or remnant, mm-hmm. the body of Christ, if you will. Looks like we're losing ground. Looks like uh, we're doomed. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're the minority of minorities, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But it could it be that uh, that there could still be a major revival? I think there's going to be. Well, well, let me say I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to have revival. Well, just just go ahead. That that part, and I think uh, it started in me earlier this week. And uh, so I, I'm excited about what God is showing me personally and individually. And I've also come to the understanding that, uh, uh, you know, we may all have different perspectives concerning things. But if mine's wrong, just leave me alone. I, I, <laughs> I, need, I need to have my perspective uh, for many for many reasons. Um, I think that there comes times when people get so earthly minded that they become no heavenly good. Yeah. I used to hear the statement when I was growing up, you know, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. Yeah. I'd like to be there. I think <laughs> that's a good perspective um, because most people are too earthly minded to be any heavenly good. Yeah. Yeah. And most people, when I say it that way, I mean, to, I, mean, I mean that there's a lot of people who serve God for earthly benefit. And if there's no earthly benefit to it, they're not interested in serving God. Yeah. They get disappointed in God if there's no earthly benefit to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we need to understand that as the church, we're a heavenly people. We have heavenly promises. This is one of the distinctions of the Word of God right. between Israel and the church. So earlier this week, I'm thinking about the seven churches. And a couple of weeks ago, I went into this teaching in Morganton on, on the great falling away and the apostasy, mm-hmm. the apostate form of the church. And, and so I've been thinking a lot about that. Well, I'm riding through Revelation, and I've got the first three chapters done, and I'm giving that in written form to the people at the Grace Place. And uh, so through, going through that writing, it become apparent to me that the great falling away started at the beginning. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the church, there's two streams that developed. One was a believing remnant stream, and one was an apostate stream. Mm-hmm. In that apostate stream, it started when they left their first love. Mm-hmm. That began that stream of Ephesus. apostasy. Yes, right. that you can you can track that all the way till you get to Laodicea. Mm-hmm. There's also a believing remnant stream in every church going through there. Talking about the seven uh, churches through and through the seven churches, and that believing remnant gets to the church of Philadelphia, where from in the last two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea. You have two doors. One's open, one's closed. Then in Revelation 4.1, there's a door open in heaven. Mm -hmm. The door open in heaven of Revelation 4.1, I think, is connected to the door open to the Church of Philadelphia. I think hidden inside of that portal, that open portal from earth to heaven, is the revival that the church not only stands in need of, but can have and have that's, that's today. Key. That's key key there. We can have it today. Yeah. We don't have to wait. Right. We can have it today. So here's what the Lord began to deal with me. But I've, there's things through that open door in that portal that I think is uh, significantly important to the Church of Philadelphia in how to frame the construct of what this last day revival is going to look like. Mm -hmm. I think God gives us a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start talking about that next week at the Grace Place. But here's what I got tripped up on. Starting with the beginning church, with the church of Ephesus, one of the commands of God to that church was remember. Mm -hmm. You have to remember and then repent. Mm -hmm. When John was called up, into the to the open door of Revelation four one, mm-hmm. that verse begins with this. After this, so all week the Lord's been dealing with me about those two terms. Remember when, and after this. So I'm preaching this morning, and I was uh, leading up to that point. 
when it suddenly hit me how that in Revelation chapter 1, in nearly every context of how Jesus is introducing himself to John, it was all about the dimensions of time. Right. I mean, he's, he's saying to John, I am he that was alive, or, or I am he that was dead and is alive and is alive forevermore. I'm the Alpha, the Omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. He is the timeless God. Mm-hmm. God's not stuck in the parameters of time. So here's, here's what I, I, I run into today. I, I mean, I guess I said the words, but they become a living reality in my spirit this morning. With every encounter with God, there's timeless dimensions attached to it. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it means that if you want to really encounter God, you can have an emotional experience if you want to, but if you really want to encounter God, it requires in the spirit stepping out of the boundaries of time into eternity. When you do that, time things or anything that is trapped by time no longer holds the same value mm-hmm. as things that are eternal. Mm-hmm. So the treasures of this earth and all of the benefits of this earth, uh, they kind of grow dim in light of the eternal value of Christ and his presence. You can't be in the presence of Christ, Alan, without stepping out of the boundaries of time Mm -hmm. because God's not in time. Mm -hmm. He's eternal. When that truth hit me, it was like God was saying this to me. Hey, Jeff, remember when I did this. Remember when I, I intervened in your life here. Remember when... I performed this miracle that you saw. Remember when I answered this prayer you prayed. Strengthen those things that remain, he said Mm -hmm. to the church of Sardis. Bring them forward, and then watch this, Alan. Step into after this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And if you step into after this, what you're doing is you're going through that spiritual portal from earth to heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's opening up heavenly blessings. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the heavens are open and the Holy Spirit descends on you like a dove. Mm -hmm. And God says, you're my my child. Mm -hmm. You're my child. You're actually in communion. You're in communion. Jeff, where do you get the, <clears throat> where if you're going to be in the presence of God, you have to step outside of the constraints of time? Because that's do, what I experienced with my, when I wrecked. That's the, I, I got to experience, I felt like I got to experience that, what you're that talking about. That timelessness. Yes. Yeah. Because where, are you, where are you getting that? I get that from, from the introductions of Christ to John, mm-hmm. where he says, I am the beginning and the end. I am the Lord that was. I am the Lord that is. I am the Lord that is to come. Mm-hmm. He's He's outside of time. Right. God's eternal. Yeah. We're stuck fleshly mm-hmm. in time. So when you encounter God, it's a spiritual encounter. Mm-hmm. It's not a fleshly encounter. It's not an earthly encounter. It has manifestations on the earth, but it's a spiritual encounter. And in that moment mm-hmm. in the spirit, I think we are disassociated from our body to the point, like Paul said, mm. whether in the body or out of the yeah. body, I can't tell. Yeah. What I do know is I'm in the presence of God. And in that presence, there is timelessness. Mm-hmm. And because of that timelessness, we see the value of things eternal and we're no longer addicted mm-hmm. to the, um, how do you say it, invaluable things of earth. What happens too, I think, Jason, the reason you experience that is of our 24-hour day, yeah. um, we are so consumed with the now stuff. We're yep. so consumed with, yep. well, am I going here? Am I going there? I want to get this. I'm going to do that, yada, yep. yada, yada. There's not hardly a waking moment. But what happens with you when you had that wreck? Mm-hmm. Time stopped. Time yep. stopped. You see, time, I mean... Mm-hmm. There didn't anything make any difference. Anything yep. you wanted or didn't want or would be yep. or some, some yada, yada, mm-hmm. yada. Everything stopped. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it gave you that sense of, yeah. <clears throat> of um, you know, dying. Of, yeah. Of you have all of these different sensations, which is a reality. I mean, you came very, very close to dying there. and But you, you ran in and I, <clears throat> I mean, Jason's constantly... Mm-hmm trying to bring definition Mm -hmm. 
to that new experience he yeah. had yeah. when he had that uh and I would have to say it was a timeless experience. It was a timeless sure. experience. And sure. it'll leave an indelible mark yeah. on him throughout his time on earth because it has timeless value. Through the rest of his life. Yeah. And you'll even have a hard time trying to you won't even be able express to it to yeah. others. You can't explain it. Yeah, you can't really explain it. You have to others. experience it. Yeah. <laughs> it'll get so frustrating. Yeah. And, yeah. That's the reason I feel your frustration almost yeah. is uh, Well one of the well, things yeah, go ahead. It's it's to me, time is such an earthly thing now. It is. Like we think of, we think, oh, well, the average person, you know, if you live to 90 years old, you've lived a good life. Mm. 90 years is nothing. It doesn't it's a even, vapor. In, in heavenly yeah. language, it's not even a thing. It's a vapor. Yeah, yeah it's not even a real thing. Mm -hmm. Time is not real. It's that's a, right. It's just we're constrained to it here on earth. That's right. And so that's the that's what I think what you're hitting on is really that's really interesting. Well, I like and it. It, it. Don't you think it's also back to the original creation? Adam and Eve was not they wasn't created to die. They were created to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be eternal, but because of their uh, disobedience to the Lord, time was involved. Mm -hmm. Time uh, became the boundary, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I think. Oddly enough, even I think that time thing that that time element we're talking about, with every encounter, it's it's with Christ, it's attached to a timeless dimension. But that's not that's just the ingredients, the remember whens and the after this is. It's taking our past, it's it's appropriating our future into our present that gives us victory. Those are just merely the ingredients to get us to the door. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the open door is what real revival, uh, life-transforming power. I think that's through that open door to the Church of Philadelphia. We're going to delve into that next week and get into those elements of what real revival is supposed to look like. Because i got to tell you, you use that term revival, and everybody get, they get wacko about it. You can mention revival to some people. To them, it means a stirring or a manifestation of some spiritual gift. To others, it means an act of healing. To some, it means, uh, you know, great financial blessing or miracle. Uh, all of these things have been earmarked as revival. I think God looks at things a whole lot different than we do. Mm -hmm. Again, I say, most people are serving God for earthly reward, not for heavenly treasure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's got to be altered. And I think that what happens a lot of time is in the apostate institution of the church, it is so earthly. Mm -hmm. It's filled with such uh, earthy success, you know, but very little power of God. They have forms of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. So tracing that the believing remnant th from Ephesus to all the way to the open door and tracing the apostate church all the way from Ephesus to the closed door, I think it's an interesting concept and study. And we, I just did a little overview of some of the ingredients of the apostate church and some of the ingredients of the believing remnant that is listed throughout those seven letters that Jesus wrote to the to the churches. And it was it's, it was very eye opening mm -hmm. for me. And we've talked before about and I made the, the comment at the Grace Place and I'll make it here. I believe the church is going through the tribulation mm -hmm. without any doubt. The church is going through the tribulation. Mm -hmm. But it's not the believing remnant. It's the apostate institution mm -hmm. that's going through the tribulation. It's mm -hmm. that church of Laodicea that will be ushered into that time of Jacob's trouble and that I believe is, is going to be the, the, the culprit that is named in the book of Revelation that causes the kings of the earth to drink the wine of her fornication. Mm -hmm. I believe that. That's the apostate church. The believing remnant's called up through the open door. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I don't know. It was just as if God gave me a little glimpse into the open door. I, I want to see that corporate outpouring, mm -hmm. you know, where people corporately move into such love for God, into such, um, I don't know, disassociation of this physical universe that they really grab a hold of the Spirit of Christ and are engulfed in that spiritual environment you was talking about a minute ago, 
And I think that environment includes all of those elements at Philadelphia that's right through that open door that we're going to start talking about next week, I hope. Mm-hmm. I know I am. Um, so it was it was just a very, I don't know, a unique time for me today. It has been over the last couple of days, actually, in, in mapping some of those things out in my mind. I can't articulate all that's in me. I just know it's it's in there. And, well, it's and, coming out. And, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm <clears throat> praying that God's going to give uh, words to. Well, we'd all know sitting here in. that if if the God's people uh, don't have this experience of timelessness with God. Yes. That you and Jason both are referring to. Um, I just don't know how effective we're going to be it going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because as a church in these days that we're in, to have a church or to have our lives without an open door over our lives and over our churches and over our families, without that open door, it's going to be hell on earth. You know what? I got, uh, I'm sorry. It's yeah. just, we were, uh, this morning, they were, uh, <clears throat> we have this time where we do, um, we'll do a worship song, and then, and then we have people to share, you know, mm-hmm. whatever God, a verse of Scripture, a word. And uh, Don Barrett made reference this morning to the House of Prayer this past Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. She was talking about, uh, and I heard it when you were saying it Wednesday night. There was power to it, and there was such power to it, you kept repeating it. Remember the watchman? Mm-hmm. You remember that? Mm-hmm. The what You said it over and over and over and over again. Well, there was an answer to that call. And at the Grace Place, that was brought up this morning. Uh, mm-hmm. The watchman. And and trying to arrange that that paradigm of mm-hmm. having watchmen, and mm-hmm. I told him this morning. I said, unless we have some watchmen on the wall, these are the most dangerous times in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we're going to survive without it. Yeah, we're we're, we're not. And I don't think we're going to survive without this revival of the o- that's behind the open door either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think we will. I don't think we will. Uh, listen. I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but things on the earth, I can't say the word because we'd probably get kicked off. But and I'd, you know a, what I'm it's saying. It's in a mess. It's bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's bad. And I mm-hmm. don't, I, do you have any interest in, in living out earth without Christ or without any not, hope of not Christ? Even, not I mean, even, come on. Not even a little bit. <laughs> you, know, you take the seven churches in, in, in Revelation chapter two, Jeff. Yeah, we I, we can wonder. Okay, what's what, what is a word to the church? Mm. You know, God in this day, COP twenty seven, yeah. climate change, all this yada yada yada. Going, what do we do? And that it's for that reason when we go to the book of Revelation, it says it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. So yes, the whole New Testament is about the coming of Christ. Mm-hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, first coming. Then you got Romans through five, uh, Revelation, the second coming yeah, of Christ. Exactly. So, all of the scriptures, New Testament, are written in light of His next coming. That's right. It's not written. You say, "Well, it's written for today," and yet it's not. It's written. It's all in the context. You want to keep it in context? context? Second coming of Christ. And you know what, Alan? In that believing <clears throat> remnant, that's mm-hmm. that's that's that that stream of the believing remnant from Ephesus on. This is not exhaustive, mm-hmm. but if you take the huge general um, uh, parameters of what Jesus said to the church, to, to the believing remnant, it outlines what we're supposed to be doing now. Mm-hmm. In a lot of, first, we have a lifestyle of repentance. Mm-hmm. That was the first call to Ephesus. To remember and right. repent. We live a lifestyle of repentance. The second church, there has to be a correct perspective of suffering. Mm-hmm. The third church, refuse a mixture of doctrine with the world. Mm-hmm. Fourth church, live a lifestyle of love, faith, service, and endurance. In the next church, constantly strengthen those things that have guided you in the past into the presence mm-hmm. of Christ. Mm-hmm. In the next one, this. Keep the word and live honorably to the name of Christ. Those are big ideas of each but that's with each church. Mm-hmm. Okay. And those are the, the assignments of the believing remnant. Without that, without that, 
then what you end up having, according to the Lord, you'll lose your first love. Mm -hmm. You will become a professor and not a possessor. You will be deceived by doctrines of the world, such as the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. All right, let me ask you something. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the first, what, three churches there? Yeah. Will Christ, can you have an outpouring in any one of those churches if Jesus says, but I got this against you? Yes. Because there's a believing remnant in each church. But there is this, this, this struggle of apostate things that accumulates over time, just like in the believing remnant, there's things that accumulates over time. And, and, and what I'm saying is, is, is that in this apostate church, that is where the struggle is. The real warfare that we're facing is not in the world. Mm -hmm. That's right. The world is the fallout of the war that's being waged in the church. Mm -hmm. The world is merely the, the mirror or the byproduct of this war that's going on in the church. Mm -hmm. And the church, for the most part, wants to be a bunch of peacekeepers during wartime. Mm -hmm. And the war that's being raged is people are no longer loving God first. Mm -hmm. They would rather profess than possess. They're yielding to doctrines of Balaam and Nicolaitan. They're yielding to the spirit of Jezebel. They have forms of godliness, but they're really embracing death. They I end up I, lukewarm. I'm, I'm, at this point, I don't think that there will be an outpouring in Ephesus if Jesus has that against them. Mm. Now, if they repent, I would agree with you. That's why there has to be a lifestyle of repentance. But, there has, but you have to repent. You have to Until repent. Until you repent, I think the door is closed. I agree with you. You see. But to the believing <clears throat> remnant, that's the first, that's the first uh, characteristic. There is a lifestyle mm -hmm. of repentance. Mm -hmm. And there has to be that. But you see, we, we kind of are under this idea with Christendom versus Christianity that the church can tolerate so much mixture and still be the church. Yeah, I don't think they can. But according to that, according Jesus to says, okay, God. you've done all these great things and oh, yada, 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 but I got something got against something you. got something against you. I got right. something against you. Yeah. And it just so happens the only church that had an open door was the one that Jesus didn't have nothing against. That's exactly right. That's not to say right. that the ones he has something against, they can't repent and then him not have nothing against them. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but repentance has to come first. But we're under this yeah. idea, I think, Jeff, that the grace of God will allow for a certain amount of mixture in our churches and we can still have a true heaven open revival. Don't believe that. I don't believe it either. Don't believe that's possible. Aren't the lines getting so distinct now that the remnant wouldn't stay there? I think that it's I mean, possible. It's, I, I think the thing that troubles me, and I'm confused about this part. I struggle with this part. Yeah. Let me say that. Say it that way. I, I do struggle I'm with as, this part as a Christian yes. as a whole. I struggle with this part, and this is why I'm tapping into that time thing. I believe what you're saying is right. First Church, Ephesus. Unless there's repentance, there can be no revival. We know that's that's a Bible truth. You, if you take Bible to interpret Scripture to interpret Scripture, we know that's a truth. Right. Without repentance, there can be no revival. <clears throat> Watch this. The very first thing Jesus said to that church, if what we're saying is true, and there's two streams involved, an apostate stream and a believing remnant stream, if that's true, the first thing Jesus said to the church of Ephesus is you left your first love. Mm -hmm. Therefore, remember. Mm-hmm. Remember, before you left your first law, mm -hmm. repent, do the first works. Mm -hmm. okay. So the very first call was developing a lifestyle of repentance throughout the church. Mm -hmm. okay. if, that, if that doesn't happen, there cannot be a correct perspective of suffering. Mm -hmm. There will not be insight to see deceptive doctrines and philo secular philosophical mm -hmm. ideologies that pervert the Word of God. You won't mm -hmm. see it, so you'll be blind to it. Mm -hmm. There won't be a lifestyle of love, faith, patience, endurance, and service. There won't be that. It won't be there. 
I think when Jason says what he said there a minute ago, here's the thing I, I, I do struggle with. If the war is really in the church, and I believe it is, I think it is. I think that the reason we're seeing what we're seeing in the world with the toleration of behavior that is out there now, the reason we're seeing it is because the war that's being waged in the church, now the church is becoming more apostate than it is going through the open door into the presence of God. Well, there's no doubt that in Christendom, you have such a mixture now, and to me the mixture is the problem. You have such a mixture now that uh, with even with other religions, mm-hmm. you know, you got this mix. You can say, well, we got a problem with worldliness in the church. I wish that was our was our problem. You, it's the mixture of uh, we can have mixture of the world, but it's the mixture of other religions uh, that comes into the church of Christendom. Which I, I said this this morning. I said the kingdom of God has a greater problem with Christendom than it does the world. I agree with that. Totally and, agree. With and that. it's because the enemy has taken over Mm -hmm. the form of Mm -hmm. Christianity. That's right. uh, To peddle its wares, if you will. I totally agree. And and to take over the world and to look like, and that's the reason you got the Antichrist, the false prophet. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to mimic uh, what God. So our big problem, I hate it's that way, but we're, we're so busy trying to, have people not seeing like the world mm-hmm. that we fail to make in a distinction between, according to what I, the way I view Scripture, a religious spirit is worse than sin of the world. I agree. Oh. Totally agree. You see, I, I completely so, agree. So that's somebody who thinks they're right with God. Mm-hmm. In other words, they're a representative of God mm-hmm. to the point yeah, we think that same-sex marriage well, is fine. We think, yeah, yeah. In other words, we're acting like we're little gods, uh, but we're Christian. Con- so that's the greatest. Mm-hmm. To me, that is a huge wow. I think that's more harmful to the kingdom. Consider this for a second. The first five churches have all of these commendations, condemnations. Mm-hmm. The sixth church is Philadelphia, so there's an open door. Seventh church, the apostate form, the Laodicean church. In the fifth church, it lines up the letter that Jesus wrote to to Sardis. Mm -hmm. Lines up exactly with what Paul told Timothy in his letter, that they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power, which is them (laughs) saying, you have a name that you lie, but you really did. So we know that that part of the apostate Christendom is in effect now. I think included in those forms of doctrine, those forms of godliness, are other religions that you're talking about that's being pulled in now. What is the mirror? What is the effect on the world of that? I, I, I'm going to say this, and this is probably going to get us in trouble maybe. I don't know. I hope it don't, but maybe whatever. This morning, I was watching the news. The news. The news. Yeah. The news. Fox News. The Fox News. Now, watch this. A commercial came on. The commercial was about a medication for HIV. Okay? Right. For uh, 60 seconds, that commercial showed two men kissing. Holding hands. Did did you count? Putting their arms around each other. Okay? Now, here's my point. Here's my point. When I was a kid growing up, that would not have been allowed on television. Would it have been allowed on television? No, no. Uh-uh. Well, couldn't have showed that. I didn't have a television. Well, that's what. Yeah. That's, yeah. What I'm saying to you but no, is that the not. what we're seeing in the world, we're seeing both politically, morally, philosophically, mm-hmm. in every way. I think we're seeing it. Because of the war that is being waged in the church, that we're either winning or losing. People can draw their own conclusions mm-hmm. as to whether we're winning or losing. I am saying this, however. There is still hope for the conduit 
of the Holy Spirit through the open portal in heaven. That's the church of Philadelphia. Given to the church of Philadelphia yeah. right now. But we have mm-hmm. to remember. Mm-hmm. And we've got to grab a hold of a little bit of after this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we've got to bring that into our now. Mm-hmm. If we don't, then those elements that's behind that open door in Second Peter and, mm-hmm. and the introduction of Christ, that church, I don't think we'll see it. Mm-hmm. And also, if the believing remnant is deceived into defining a revival as some kind of a miracle manifestation entertainment show, mm-hmm. You're not going to see it either. Mm-hmm. It's a life transforming event that finally breaks through uh, the understanding. Well, according to, uh, you know, according to the scriptures, it is the revival is the repentance. Uh, I mean, the repentance. It's the the glorious. Uh, party, if you will, of repentance mm-hmm. is the revival. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, that, that is the, that's, re, that's that's what, the that's revival. That's where it leads you to. Yeah, that's, and, that's and then where the, revived, yeah. the revived spirit, there's, there's one thing to live in a revival, and there's another thing to live in the kingdom. So then could we say this? Just as the apostate form of the church has been with us since the church started, so has revival. It's been with us the whole time. The whole time, because repentance, when you're really in a revival, it's when you got people staying up and crying, you won't believe what God's forgiven me. That's right. It's a a broken, contrite heart. And did you know that when someone gets to that point, I have yet to hear, I've yet to hear somebody say, oh, how merciful God has been to me to forgive me of my sin. If only... He would heal this finger. Yeah. I've not heard that of you. Or if only God would do this, or if only now God would do that. And we equate all these earthly things. I'm not saying that God can't do that. He does. Of course he can. Yeah. Uh, But I'm saying that that's not the priority of our minds. The repentive heart is the fuel of revival that's right that's the fuel of revival mm-hmm. now there's another thing to have the fuel of revival and there's another thing to live inside the kingdom of god mm-hmm. in other words we we know that there is it takes on a divine nature we spoke about that yeah philadelphia i says think there's, part, an, there's an open the, door that's right uh, i think a, re, a revival or a personal revival even can lead us up to a situation that we can now pull off the divine nature of God, which is, yeah. is actually it's holiness. Yeah, it's, it's holiness. holy in the godly life. It's holiness and it's truth. Mm-hmm. It's worship. It's warfare. It's the establishment of the kingdom of God in your mm-hmm. heart, mm-hmm. which is the key of David. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's those things that Jesus used to introduce himself to the church of Philadelphia. That's, what's, that's what that open door Have you got that in about. front of you? I can pull it uh, up. Revelation there. Uh, uh, chapter 2, and it speaks about the sixth church, which is Philadelphia, is what we're speaking about. It's the only church there, I guess, as far as we know, has had an open door. It is the only church of the seven that has an open, open door. door. It's, it's uh, Revelation 3, 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, and this is where it gets good, and this is where I'm going to be at next Sunday. Mm-hmm. These things saith he that is holy. That's in the open door. These things saith he that is holy, he that is true. That's in the open door. He that hath the key of David. That's That's in the open door. That's the interesting key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth, shutteth and no man openeth. That's what last day revival looks like. Mm -hmm. Those elements. I think they are tied to 2 Peter and the divine nature. We've talked about that. In, In that, you cannot, you cannot even think about the authority or the key of David. Jesus said this to, to Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Once mm-hmm. you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Once you loose on earth, be loosed in heaven. Here he says, I'm the one that hath the key of David. He says in the next verse, behold, I've set before thee an open door. What is that open door? What is, what, what's released through that open door? It's the holiness of Christ, the truth of Christ. It's the authority of the establishment of the throne of David. 
You think about David. What, 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 what are some of the representations of his life? Worship. Warfare. Did you know on worship and warfare was the only two elements that God required complete unity of his people? Mm-hmm. Worship and warfare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that being said, you have all of that in that open. He that openeth, no man shutteth, shutteth, no man openeth. You know what's in the open door? Complete supremacy or control and surrender to the control of Christ. Mm-hmm. That's what's being said when he says, I open, no man shuts. I shut, no man opens. Mm-hmm. When he right on the heels of that, he says, now I've set before you an open door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, watch. If we're part of the Church of Philadelphia, we have to agree with the words of Christ. Mm -hmm. Given to us right now is an open conduit to heaven. But I guess the question would be answered, which church are you in? Yeah, you got to ask yourself that question. you got to ask yourself that question. you got to ask yourself that question. Mm -hmm. It depends on which stream you're walking in. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And that's Mm -hmm. where I'm at with this. And so I have determined, you know, I've been praying, begging God. We went through an amazing time in my life. And I'm telling you, uh, people can say whatever they want. I have nothing. I don't have a whole lot to lose anymore. I know what it's like to lose it all. Mm -hmm. We had an amazing revival. Mm -hmm. I'd go through all of it again Mm -hmm. for just a moment of that presence. And this morning, I think God gave me a little peer mm. into that open well, that's door. That's good stuff. And I'm going to get to see it. Praise God. I'm going to get to experience I it. I believe that. And I'm going to walk in it and grab it. Yeah. And I'm not going to let nobody shake me from it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm seasoned in criticism yeah. and uh, right. and all the rest. I'm seasoned there. Uh, so I'm not going to let somebody come along and say, "Oh yeah, but this or that." I've heard, I've heard, uh, I just heard another, <laughs> got another message this week. It's constant. It's t- getting tacky from Satan. Right, right. Uh, somebody who went around a couple of their friends and said, "Oh, it wasn't no revival over at Shiloh." Let me tell you something. I had revival. Well, I don't doubt whatsoever the person who said that didn't. They probably didn't. I did. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. So it opened up to me this this idea that, watch this, I'm going to have revival whether anybody else does or not, and I'm going to enjoy it. We're not long for this earth. Uh -uh. Ain't none of us here long for this earth. And it's not that big of a deal to slip through the door. No, Uh uh-uh. No. But until I do slip through the door and this body lays down and I get a new one that can yeah. contain the yeah. glory, I think I'm going to try to stuff as much of the glory in as I can. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. one thing of you? Yes, do it. When you pick that new body, can I be there and help you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could go somewhere. Barbara Allen. I mean, see, here's the thing. Watch. I'm sorry, sorry we was. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my life right there. He just runs right up to the edge. I Where's Deborah happen. Duggan when I need I Deborah, couldn't. listen to this, honey. He goes right to the edge. Then just right over. I couldn't. Right over. That's one of them crazy ones. <laughs> I'm going to have revival. Revival can still happen. Revival can still happen even among a corporate setting as long as there's a corporate people that's willing to lay down this earth and pick up heaven. Well, see, one thing, just like our revival that we were in, Jeff, what happens is people that were there experience the revival. Mm. But then when you get, uh, when you get pick up a judgment, mm. what, the bad part about judgment is it'll rob uh, all of your good memories. It'll rob the things of God. That's what it's about. It's about... He's a thief and he's a robber. So one of two things, if somebody was there and said nothing happened, one of two things happened. Uh, they did not experience revival. And uh, the second one is if they probably, good chance they did, and uh, uh, they let they formed a judgment against somebody and the enemy robbed them of it. That's all. Yeah. And that's the reason the skin at the seven churches says, remember, 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 you back. Hey, remember. you left your first love. And that's you what remember. happened to that very person that's exactly that said right. that about revival. That's exactly right. And I bet you, you got a miserable, poor and blind. You, you know? know, and the thing is, uh, several years ago, I, I was on, I, we've talked about this. I had to be on a medication for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was on that medication for three years. I was only supposed to be on it a few weeks. And you're not supposed to quit it cold turkey, and I did. I did, yeah. you know, whatever. 
and and they say that's supposed to kill you. Well, it did do some things to my memory. Yeah. Right. So right. this week, uh, I'm I'm I, I run into that remember when thing. Yeah. That and God yeah. told me. He said you got to remember. Yeah. And I, I I just I just broke down before the Lord, and I said I can't remember. Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't have a lot of memory. Yeah. Left. Yeah. 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 And God said, I'll restore it. He's going to restore it. And He just started reminding me yeah. of things I'd forgot. Yeah. Well, you know, in the screen. And boy, it was good. I'm telling you. Yeah. And He took me to the to, right to the door. Right, right to the door. <laughs> he got me to the door. <laughs> well, you know, it says Ooh. in Genesis that we're created in the image of God. Yeah. Right? Mm. Well, that word for image there, yeah. Hebrew is Zachar. Yeah. And it means Zach, remembering it means ones. the remembering <laughs> yeah. ones. Yeah. And so what the enemy's after is right. that memory. Yeah. You see, and God will restore it. Yeah. He's and, restoring uh, a lot of it. Yeah. He, well, at least yours got stole. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not go no further with me. Oh, boy. <laughs> I could step in there. <laughs> yeah. You can. There, there's things I could say. <laughs> yeah, I know. But <laughs> since there's being, a lot being, of stuff. But you see, see, if you're going to keep <laughs> the Philadelphia door open, you're going to have to refrain. <laughs> Now you're going to have to refrain. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. But that's true. You know, you, you were on the medication. Actually, it's the same medication that uh, Jordan Peterson was on. It was the same. Uh, if anybody wants to know. Yeah. It was that same medication, and it just about killed Jordan Peterson. Just about. And killed, that's when we yeah. found out uh, oh boy. what the heck was going on. <laughs> like, oh, my Lord Jesus, come now, Lord Jesus. That's what in the world mind. is going on? So yeah. we found out that... Uh, and we've all had different times. It's like the enemy's tried to destroy us, tried to kill us. Yeah, we've all had it. Uh, uh, Jason, it's it's a. I remember back just like with Jason with his wreck and his and his motorcycle, and I heard him saying, "At least y'all don't understand something happened." Something happened. It's right. like, somebody something just happened. don't understand something happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> he stepped into that timeless spot. He stepped right in that timeless spot. He yeah, experienced well, it. Yeah. And he knows it happened. And you it'll change you. Oh, it'll, yeah. you'll never be the same. It'll change you. It'll change you. It gives me a little more uh, hope, though. I have more hope today than I did the first part of the week yeah, yeah. for a move of God. Yeah. It's cool. And, and I, I, I'm no longer... Tied down to, I don't, I don't, I, this is going to sound a little weird, weird or bizarre. I don't even uh, require to see a move of God in a corporate setting anymore. I merely require to be in the presence of God where time don't matter to me no more. That's right. That's right. And that's where I'm at. Uh, that's right. That's where I'm at. Amen. And I'm going to stay God. there. I'm going to stay there. That's your story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I can tell. I can and feel I, it. There's a bubble around me about yeah. that, and, yeah. I, and I'm not going to let nobody bust that bubble. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if somebody's got something to say about it, I'm not going to hear it. It just doesn't uh, make any sense. It's going to frustrate them to death. And yeah. you know what? And well, watch I'll this. tell you something. Can I, I tell you one more thing? Yeah. I'll that's a place. More. If I get in that place, yeah. that's a place nobody can cleanse away. Yeah. Woo. I thought I'd just throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's well, listen, gonna be able to cleanse that taint off of me. Yeah, because it ain't gonna happen. I just wonder how. Um, I don't know. There's. It's hard to say what all has happened. We've seen God do, but I really believe what we're going to see God do. We'll pale what we've already seen. Jim. Going to be way more glorious than anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. You know, Josh Bunton uh, brought his daughter home uh, this week, wasn't it, yep. Jason? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I saw And uh, I don't know I if you got to throw up a picture of her or not, but, uh, you know, there she was. How long was that, two weeks ago, three? I don't know how long it's been. Gosh, it's had to be two three. Or three weeks. Yeah. I mean, she was, uh, I mean, they didn't, uh, when they first drove up on the track. Well, yeah, she should have right. been yeah. dead. Oh, yeah, a hundred yeah. times over. Oh, yeah. yeah. And today she was actually uh, at church in a wheelchair, uh, but she came home from the hospital this week and uh, absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, that, you know, God, that she's just a, a walking miracle, which we, you know, a lot yeah. of us are. But she's a walking miracle she, of what. Uh, yeah. Of what of the power what, of God can what do. What the power of God will and do. And the power of prayer can do. Oh, my goodness sakes alive. It's just, that's just, uh, that's just absolutely amazing of what God can do. There, there she is. Go. 
There he is on know. Facebook. Now, what's her name, Jason? Her name is Abby. Abby. Abby Button. She's in a wheelchair there, as you can see. Yep. But she's with her father today in church. And she's That's alive. You. And she's alive. <laughs> and, and she's alive. And and uh, doing quite well. Mm-hmm. So I just want to praise God for that. She just, came, she just came home on Friday and was at church on Sunday. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You know what, Lord, we bless that church. Yes, we do, Lord We bless Jesus. those people, and, and we bless we bless them. Uh, Josh and Abby and all of those that are there. I pray, God, you'll pour your spirit on them. Yes, yes. I pray that everything that has been uh, given to that place would be multiplied. Amen. A hundred times over for them. Amen. Lord, I pray that yeah. they'll see a, a ten times more than all yes, that we Lord, saw. God absolutely, Lord. That yes. it would just be an outpouring Please of the Holy do that, Spirit. God. We beg you for that. And just bless them real good. And yeah. uh, we just ask and pray that this trial will be turned into glory. Yes, Lord. Uh, for the yes, kingdom God. of God. And we continue to pray for Abby. Mm-hmm. Uh, for continual healing. Continual healing, and Lord. Pray, Lord, that she'll not have any long-lasting... Uh, effects uh, physically, mentally, or whatever. Yes. We just pray, oh God, that you'll come out on the other side of this, singing your praises once again, and that you'll be praising your holy yes, name. Yes, Lord Jesus. I pray for Josh, Lord, that with his preaching, mm-hmm. I pray that he'll hit another gear. Yes. He'll Lord. take it to another level, yeah. and that he can preach the kingdom of God with more authority mm-hmm. now than he ever has. And so, Lord, just let him know there at that place that we bless them Mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus and Lord God we do ask and pray for the all the churches we pray yes the Philadelphia church on all the churches rise up (laughs) the spirit of the Philadelphia church of Revelation 2 that uh, would rise up that open heavens can start opening up yes that these portals might open up over the churches of Jesus Christ Across this country, let it happen, mm-hmm. and around this world, let the Church of Jesus Christ be the most unusual place on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. That's my story. Yes. And I'm sticking to it. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. Big J. All right. We'll see you next week. Amen.